Hey guys, today I want to be reacting to Dove Cameron's skincare routine. And I just want to say before we get started that this is in no way meant to disrespect her or the products in any way. I'm just going to be going through each product that she uses and looking at the ingredients objectively from a chemist perspective. I mean, she's absolutely beautiful. Her skin is radiant. So obviously this is working for her. Maybe give you some less expensive alternatives as well. And okay, I'm really excited. Let's just get right into it. Okay, so first off, I washed my hands. Um, I've definitely gotten more conscious about that since being in quarantine, but also, I don't know, I'm such a germaphobe, like I feel like you touch so many things, there's so much like dirt and oil and stuff like that, so I never like to touch my face until I've washed my hands, so, BRB. Okay, so off to a great start. Washing your hands should always be the first step in your skincare routine, especially during this time, but always because, yes, oil and dirt from your fingers can get into your pores, clog your pores, and just exacerbate acne. So this is great that she's starting off by washing her hands. Now that I have clean hands, um, I always start, I never do a pre-cleanse. This is all I ever need. This is my favorite cleanser ever. I have really dry skin. Okay, so when I hear cleansing oil, I'm thinking the double cleanse method in which you first remove your makeup and SPF with an oil-based cleanser and then go in with a water-based cleanser for the second step. However, she said that she doesn't go in with any kind of cleanser before this. So I think what she's saying here is that she uses this as her one and only cleanser. Um, I am a little bit concerned about that because Especially for acne prone skin, I certainly would recommend if you use an oil cleanser to afterwards go in with a water based cleanser to ensure that you have removed all the oil residue to ensure that you've removed the makeup and oil. Um, let me check on the ingredient list on this one though because I'm not familiar with this particular cleansing oil. Okay, so it was actually kind of difficult to find an ingredient list, but I was able to find some ingredients on their website. And on their website, it does say that it contains emulsifiers. So emulsifiers are going to allow the product to kind of foam up gently. So if an oil cleanser has an emulsifier, it'll usually turn a kind of creamy. Oftentimes you'll hear people call it a milk. The emulsifier is going to help it wash off more effectively with water. The fact that it has an emulsifier in it does make me feel more confident. Um, and comfortable with her using it as her only step for her cleansing. But obviously this is working really well for her. I mean, her skin is absolutely glowing and radiant. So this is working for her, but I would be concerned for someone with acne prone skin doing this because I think that it's just kind of increasing the chance of acne because there is potentially some of that oil and makeup residue kind of left in the pore. I do get a little oily kind of like in here and here little bit in here but it's so hard for me to keep my skin hydrated I have to go to like the ultimate like I have to do the most just to keep my skin hydrated so she said she gets kind of oily in her t-zone area so I would especially recommend for her to take a water-based cleanser and um, focus it on those areas and then just kind of gently massage it on the entire face and then rinse it off. So again, I couldn't find all the ingredients in this cleanser, but from what I can tell, the ingredients are well-researched, backed by science. So it has safflower oil. Safflower oil is especially nice for oily and acne-prone skin. Safflower oil helps restore the skin barrier, and it also helps balance sebum levels. So it helps balance the oil, oil production in your skin. Also, it contains green tea. I have a video all about green tea and matcha and skincare. I'll have it linked below for you, but green tea is very soothing. It helps reduce redness and pore size as shown by scientific evidence, and it also contains an antioxidant called EGCG. So I'm very supportive of this oil cleanser. I think that the ingredients sound great, but again, I would personally recommend going in with a very gentle water-based cleanser afterwards, and the one that I would recommend would be the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser from Crave Beauty. I just did a video about my top cleansers for dry skin, um, and so I'll link that below, and I talked about that cleanser in that video, so I'll have it linked below for you. But it's very gentle, very gentle, and my skin literally feels more moisturized after I use that cleanser than before. It's incredible. So, I do this before I take my eye makeup off. I don't know why. 
There's no real reason. Watch, you guys are gonna see me go for I would use the oil cleanser to remove your eye makeup. Um, oil cleansers, and it actually states on their website that this one effectively removes even waterproof mascara. So an oil cleanser like this, based on the ingredients, should definitely be able to remove the eye makeup as well. So I would personally use this to remove the eye makeup also. No eyebrows. I have such blonde eyebrows. Does anybody else have this? Like around the edge of your eyebrows? They're really light. Yes, oh my gosh. I have the same thing. My eyebrows um, right here on the inner portions are very light and blonde and don't show up at all. I have to fill them in. I can totally relate to that. They're really light because when I get them, I get them tinted every once in a while. I'm like, oh my god, I have eyebrows. My whole life I thought I didn't have eyebrows, but it just turns out that they're like selectively really blonde. Um, I've said that I don't use makeup wipes in the past. What I meant is I don't use it on my skin skin. I definitely need makeup wipes to get all of my eye makeup off. These are my absolute favorite makeup removing wipes. Um, the Neutrogena Makeup Remover Cleansing Towelettes. I think it's good that she doesn't use it on her skin because makeup wipes often have fragrance and honestly that's just going to kind of leave a, a residue behind on your skin with potentially irritating compounds such as the fragrance compounds. So I like that she doesn't use it on her face, but I kind of feel like it's unnecessary to use it for the eyes. Um, I feel like the oil cleanser she used would very effectively remove the eye makeup. So, um, using the oil cleanser first, cutting out the stuff with the makeup wipe, and then using a water-based cleanser, like the one from Crave Beauty that I mentioned, I think that would be more effective. She's already washed her face, so it's just going to leave that fragrance residue behind, and that could definitely be irritating and sensitizing for the eyes. Next up, once I've got my eye makeup off, is this unbelievable serum, Dr. Barbara Sturm Molecular Cosmetics Hyaluronic Serum. Okay, so this was also in Liv Tyler's skincare routine. I'll have it linked below for you. I reacted to her skincare routine as well. Hyaluronic acid, I, I use it in my skincare routine. I think it's a wonderful ingredient. However, this hyaluronic acid serum is so expensive. It's $300 um, for it's, it's three hundred dollars for that bottle and you can get really great hyaluronic acid products at the drugstore for a much less expensive price so the one that I would recommend is the Neutrogena Hydra Boost get the one that says for extra dry skin it does not contain fragrance there's one that contains fragrance and one that doesn't make sure you get the one without fragrance so it actually says um, extra dry skin on the container but that one is so much more affordable um, and it works just as effectively. There's really, in my view, no reason to pay that much for hyaluronic acid when you can, there's so many other options out there that are going to give the same benefit and have that same ingredient. Of course, I do like the fact that this hyaluronic acid serum is simple and it doesn't contain any fragrance. So yeah, that's totally fine that she likes it and that she wants to use it, but my recommendation for you guys would be that you don't have to spend that much money on a hyaluronic acid serum. You can get great ones at the drugstore. Serum. As you can tell, <laughs> I'm almost completely out. I use this stuff night and day, um, and I use it just directly following my cleansing ritual. I'm saying it like I'm super fancy, my cleansing ritual. And I always put it on the back of my hand because I have this weird thing like that. I have this weird thing where I feel like if I put it in my palm, it like sinks into my palm. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or I'm making it up, but I kind of sort of my cheeks um, and I work my way up. I don't understand how people do that thing where they like squeeze it into their palms and then they like rub them together and then they just like pat it. I'm always like, my OCD kicks in. I'm like, there's no way that you're getting it everywhere it needs to go. I definitely agree. It's definitely better to use your fingers and massage it into your skin to evenly disperse the product. Um, I definitely think that it's great that she is working it into her skin. I just let that kind of sit for a minute. It's a little jelly, but it's so nice. It like makes it feel so like moist and plump. I don't even know what hyaluronic serum does. I just know that you are absolutely supposed to work it into your skincare routine, so. 
Um, so hyaluronic acid is a humectant, meaning that it's going to hold on to water and it's going to prevent water loss from your skin. So um, actually the best way to apply it, and I learned this tip from Dr. Dre and it has literally transformed my skin. Um, you want to apply hyaluronic acid serum to your skin while it's still damp. That way it's going to hold on to that water that's still on your skin. It's going to prevent transepidermal water loss, or that means water loss from the outermost layer of your skin. It's going to make your skin very plump and hydrated. It has made the biggest difference in the hydration of my skin. Next up, I've been using lately, just since quarantine, this Mario Badescu Vitamin C Serum. I started using it because I heard it was really good for cell turnover. I could be totally making that up. I'm going to end up on one of those, like, esthetician reviews of Cameron's skincare routine. She's like, no, that's not what it does. What she's saying here is good. So vitamin C does contain a, com a component called ascorbic acid, and that is what is the most well studied and also what you find in the majority of skincare containing vitamin C. So ascorbic acid is a weak acid and so yes it is going to mildly exfoliate the skin so what she's saying about cell turnover is correct. Um, um, uh, it, it's going to mildly exfoliate your skin so it will increase cell turnover. However if her main goal is to increase cell turnover I would go with a chemical exfoliant, for example, a product containing alpha hydroxy acids. And so as far as alpha hydroxy acids, I personally love the AHA and VHA mask from The Ordinary. I reviewed this on my channel recently. I'll have it linked below for you. And also the Ordinary Lactic Acid Serum. Lactic acid is larger in size than glycolic acid and it's going to be a more gentle chemical exfoliant. So especially if you have sensitive skin, I think lactic acid would be a good route to go. Um, however, always do a patch test um, before trying new products or new ingredients. So yeah, what she's saying is true, but I think that if that if her main goal is exfoliation, increasing cell turnover rate, then I would go with a chemical exfoliant um, or some product that contains an alpha hydroxy acid because that is going to be uh, very efficient at this. And so, and as far as vitamin C, what it's more well known for is that it's an antioxidant and also it can help reverse photo damage, it can help reduce hyperpigmentation. Um, however, a problem with vitamin C is that the component of vitamin C used in skincare, L-ascorbic acid, is not very stable. It oxidizes readily. There is a lot of data supporting that L-ascorbic acid has skin benefits in um, helping to smooth out wrinkles, helping reduce photo damage, to improve the appearance of the skin. Um, however, it's a problem is that it's not super stable. So I looked up this Mario Badescu serum that she uses, and unfortunately, it does have lavender oil in it. Now, for me personally, I personally would not use this because lavender essential oil could potentially cause irritation. Some people... Um, Essential oils such as lavender oil can definitely be sensitizing and especially when using an active ingredient such as vitamin C, I just wouldn't risk using a fragrant compound such as lavender oil together with it. Um, again, obviously this is working for her. She looks beautiful, but um, if you're watching this and you're someone with uh, sensitive skin especially, but really for anyone, I don't think I would recommend this particular vitamin C serum because it has the lavender oil in it. But I do know it's really good for anti-aging. They say it's really good for skin brightening, which I can get a little dull, especially if I'm really short slept or like a bit inside. And so the alpha hydroxy acids can also help with skin brightening, again, due to the um, exfoliating properties. Okay, so this vitamin C serum is $45, and it does contain 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. So this is a vitamin C derivative. Um, so there is evidence supporting that the ethyl-protected ascorbic acid is more stable. However, there aren't as many studies for this vitamin C derivative versus the L-ascorbic acid. After I have put my first serum on, um, I will let it sit there for a minute. And then I learned this trick on set when I was like 18 years old on a movie. 
basically, I was working with this makeup artist who used to be an esthetician, and she insisted on taking our makeup off every night because she said that she was responsible for the state of our skin and she didn't want to be covering up zits. And I was like, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> you do your thing. But she took her makeup off every night and then she put some serums in, but she would work her way up our face and sort of like softly slap us with her fingertips. And she said it just brought blood flow to the surface and it helped the serum seep in. Maybe she was just taking out her aggression on us. I don't know. Okay, so I can't comment on whether there's like scientific evidence to back up to back up that, but I do personally think that facial massage can be, you know, beneficial for, you know, lymphatic drainage. Um, if you're going to kind of do the slapping motion, I, I would just be very gentle with that. I'll link a video below for a facial massage for lymphatic drainage that um, is, I find very relaxing. I think it is very nice to massage, you know, products into your skin. And, um, and yeah, like she said, increase blood flow. After that, I will quickly follow with this Creme Riche Velvet Moisturizing Cream from Tata Harbor. As you can tell, I love it so much. I'm basically out. Okay, so first of all, um, it says Peptide Night Cream. So peptides act as humectants, which means they're going to help hold on to water, help prevent water loss from the skin. So there is definitely evidence supporting that peptides act as humectants. Um, and help plump up the skin. The one concern that I have with this is that it does contain citrus oils. So if you have sensitive skin, that could potentially be irritating. Uh, however, this is $195, so that is very pricey. I feel like you can get the same benefits from a less expensive alternative. One that I really love and would recommend is the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. That has all the components of a moisturizer that are going to be they're going to effectively hydrate the skin. The First Aid Beauty Moisturizer has humectants, emollients, um, occlusive ingredients. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary to spend um, this much on a moisturizer. Um, I'm not at all criticizing her for using this. Um, I would just argue that you don't need to spend that much for it to have a really nice, effective moisturizer. And so this also contains shea butter. And the First Aid Beauty moisturizer also contains shea butter. So I think that you would get a very similar effect from a moisturizer like the First Aid Beauty one. But there are plenty of other options out there that you can get that um, are not as expensive as this. Um, <laughs> it's super, super rich. I don't know if you guys can, can tell, but it's like, I always say it's like pancake butter. It smells unbelievable. All over. I put it on top of my eyes as well. I always see people skip their eyelid, and that freaks me out. I mean, this skin is just as thin as this skin, right? We should be giving it just as much attention. So I agree. I think that you should definitely apply moisturizer around the eye area. I don't think it's necessary to have a, I don't think it's necessary to have an extra eye cream, but I definitely think that it is important to moisturize around the eye area. I'm like getting sleepy because this is my every night routine. <laughs> having like a pathology in this bottle. Okay, after that, um, I go in with this unbelievable Sturm eye cream. As you guys can tell, I'm a big Barbara Sturm fan. Look, it's like jello. So again, I don't really think eye cream is necessary, but as long as it doesn't have fragrance, as long as it is um, a simple and effective ingredient list, then I'm fine with it if that, if it's something that she enjoys. For the Barbara Sturm, eye cream. Again, the ingredients are nice, but it just is really pricey. Can you see it bouncing? No, I'm just being weird. <laughs> Why am I getting so quiet? <laughs> it's like an AS ASMR video now. Um, and I just put it just a, probably like a, like a pretty good amount under my eyes. I'm a big eye cream fan. I don't know how different it is from regular moisturizer, but I enjoy it. It, like, it just kind of like reminds me Get my eyes so again I completely respect that if you enjoy using an eye cream I think that's totally fine I don't think that it's necessary to spend extra money on an eye cream I think that if you have a good quality moisturizer like the one I mentioned from First Aid Beauty you could just use that around the eye and it will be just as effective as using an eye cream but again the one she used from Barbara Sturm is does have nice ingredients um, so I'm fine with that and I use this little roller. It's filled with rose quartz. 
I don't really think the rose quartz does anything, but it is cute. And I do think that the rolling effect helps get the product into the skin. Yeah, so I think that's nice. That can also help increase blood flow, just kind of like with the massage and increasing blood flow and also massage for lymphatic drainage. I think that this is fine as well using this tool. Again, not necessary, but it's totally fine if you enjoy it. I really revel in my nighttime routine. Any kind of self-care act, like physical self-care act, I think is so important. I think when people talk about like spending time on taking care of yourself and equating it to vanity and calling vanity a negative thing, I think that I think that that's really misinformed. I think that psychologically giving yourself that extra time and attention improves your self-esteem and it improves your relationship with yourself centers you, you know, makes you feel loved and, and valued, and I think that that's really important. I think that's really important for your life. So that's a great message that she has here. I definitely agree with that. And I mentioned this in my Liv Tyler skincare routine as well, but obviously she enjoys doing this skincare routine, and even though for some people it might seem maybe excessive, like too many products, it seems to have a very positive effect on her mental state, so very, it seems to be very calming and gives her a sense of like peace and serenity. So I definitely agree with her message here and I think it's a very positive message she has here. So next up, after I've done my moisturizer, I know that people go back and forth on kind of the order of steps, but what works best for me is I will end with straight up vitamin E oil. Um, now I got this on Amazon, so it actually is mixed with jojoba and avocado oil, but normally I would end with just a straight vitamin E oil because um, it's super, super intense. I see like a drop. So again, this is um, working very well for her. As you can see, her skin looks absolutely beautiful. Make sure that if you're introducing a new ingredient, such as vitamin E into your skincare routine, do a patch test behind your ear. Uh, wait 24 to 48 hours to make sure you're not going to have an adverse reaction before using it on your face. Um, because there actually have been some um, some people actually can develop rashes from vitamin E oil. As far as vitamin E oil, as far as um, scientific research, I have seen some really promising studies about it helping reduce photo damage. Now, obviously, she's putting this on for her nighttime skincare routine, but, but applying it during the day has been shown to help reduce photo damage. Um, from UV radiation and also there have been studies showing that it promotes wound healing in the skin So those are some of the studies for vitamin E, but again, just be aware that some people could potentially be uh, Sensitive to it and uh, especially at 100% concentration Like she said she typically uses so definitely patch test first for me personally and what I would recommend to you if you're trying to perfect your skincare routine is to just really focus on having a good quality moisturizer. So I would recommend going with fragrance free, make sure it has nice occlusive ingredients. That means that it's going to lock in the moisture that you put on your skin. Um, so ingredients like shea butter, dimethicone, you wanna make sure that it has emollient ingredients. So that would mean oils like jojoba oil. Safflower seed oil is wonderful for the skin and restoring the skin barrier. And then also humectants such as hyaluronic acid, peptides. I feel like I'm rambling. But my main point is just focus on for your nighttime skincare routine, effectively removing your makeup and SPF by doing an oil cleanser first, then a water-based cleanser, and following that up with a very nice occlusive moisturizer. That is like literally the best tips that I can give to anyone um, and avoid fragrance. Like I said in the beginning, I have very dry skin. And the most important thing about taking care of your skin so that you look good longer is moisture. A big thing for me is drinking lots of water because moisture is not just outside in. Exactly. Okay, so that is exactly what I was just saying. Really focusing on moisturizing your skin for your nighttime routine. Really finding that moisturizer that works really well for your skin. I think that is the most important thing that you can do for your nighttime skincare routine is to effectively moisturize your skin. So 
definitely a good point here. Mm -hmm. This is just for me. This isn't really for anybody else. No one's like smelling me. It's like, except for maybe my boyfriend. But I love to put on this rose absolute oil. Uh, my wrists. Okay. I kind of panicked for a second because I thought she was going to put that on her face, which could be very sensitizing, but she puts it on her wrist. That's totally fine. Yeah, I kind of panicked there for a second because I was thinking, uh, yeah, yeah, Rose Absolute definitely contains fragrance compounds such as Geraniol. Again, not everyone's going to have a problem with it, but for many people, especially those of us with sensitive skin, uh, rose oil has, you know, geraniol, these compounds that could be sensitizing, um, and also be co-sensitizing, meaning that it could cause you to become sensitized to other ingredients in your skincare routine. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with her using it on her wrist, just not on the face. Lastly, second to last, I love to, I have to moisturize my lips before I go to bed. This is the Burt's Bees Hydrating Lip Oil. Um, again, oil-based. Okay, so the Burt's Bees Hydrating Lip Oil does look nice based on the ingredients. It has castor seed oil, which is very emollient. It also has antibacterial properties. However, it does contain flavor, which again, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me say things about fragrance, which, you know, it, it is honestly difficult to find lip products without flavor. Um, the one thing that I wish that they had included here was like the type of flavor used. So when they just say flavor, there are so many different compounds that could be underneath that category. And if someone is allergic or sensitive to certain um, ingredients, then they don't know what's in it. And so they can't avoid it. Um, however, if you're looking for a fragrance-free option, one that I have found that works well for me for a nighttime lip balm is actually the Portland Bee Balm. They have ones with flavor, but they also have a fragrance-free one. And so if you're interested, I'll also have it linked below for you if you want to look into that one. But overall, I'm fine with the Burt's Bees one. one. Bees. Um, and it looks like a gloss. It's a little extra to go to bed. But it just stays on my lips for ages. So most nights, that is where I will end my skincare routine. Lately, um, just since quarantine has started, I've been using this pure avocado oil. Just on a little brush like this and I work it into my brows just a little bit to kind of like condition my brows and my lashes. I did not know that we were all supposed to be conditioning our brows and lashes like the like our hair. Okay so an emollient oil like avocado oil can definitely help condition the eyebrows and eyelashes. Um, there's not really any evidence, scientific evidence that it can help with growth but definitely it can help with breakage, like hair breakage. I agree that this is a nice step to have to condition your lashes and eyebrows. Um, again, it's not completely necessary, but um, it is a nice step to have, and I kind of want to start doing it. I have not been doing that recently, but I kind of want to start doing it again now after watching this. I mean, like, it makes sense, right? Like, we condition the hair on our head moisturize our skin why wouldn't we why would we skip the lash and brows guys and then if i want to go one step further or i'm feeling like my skin is really really dry this is my ultimate beauty hack trick this is something that i swear by besides water and sleep first and foremost and staying out of the sun this lancome multi-action ultra lift double wrapping cream mask this thing is unbelievable um Okay, so this mask on Ulta.com is $15 for one mask. Um, I do think the ingredients look nice, except that it has fragrance, which I've already talked about, so I won't harp on it any longer, but it's very difficult to find face masks like these, sheet masks, without fragrance, but I have found one um, that does not have fragrance. It's from Hado Labo. Um, it's on Amazon, no fragrance, nice ingredients backed by science, the ingredients are very moisturizing, um, so I'll have it linked below if you're interested in that one. And it's actually only $8 for four masks on Amazon, um, whereas this one was $15 for one, which I guess that's not a terrible price. I mean, again, it seems like skincare is very therapeutic for her, and she really loves this mask, so that's great. 
Again, my only concern is that it has fragrance, but again, it's so hard to find fragrance-free sheet masks. Um, I wish it wasn't, but it is. Um, and it has dimethicone, which is an excellent occlusive moisturizer. I'm telling you guys, I think the reason that this mask works so well is because of, di of dimethicone. A lot of people are scared of dimethicone because they think silicones will clog the pores. I actually have a video all about the myths of silicones in skincare where I kind of debunk these myths. Um, but I'll have it linked below for you if you want to check out that video. But dimethicone does not suffocate your skin. Your skin can still um, oxygen can still get through, so don't worry. Yeah, it's actually an FDA approved skin protectant. So yeah, nice ingredients other than fragrance. I'm not affiliated with any of these brands, but I will put this on my face, and I don't know if you can tell it comes in two. So oh, that's just, like, nice. On your face, and you you sleep in it. Like it changes. Oh, your, it will change your life. This one has cream, so it doesn't like. Sleeping, I feel like sleeping in it if it has fragrance is kind of. Mm, especially if you have sensitive skin, I don't recommend that. I mean, I, I wish they would come out with a fragrance-free option, but yeah, I mean, fragrance is very low down on the list, so it's a, it is obviously a very small percentage, but if you're sleeping in it overnight, I mean, I guess it would kind of be the same thing as putting a moisturizer with fragrance and sleeping in it, except that you literally have this mask on your face, so it's even more, it's under even more occlusion. Mm, I, I personally would not do that. I wouldn't feel comfortable with it because it has the fragrance. But, again, that's just my opinion. Drip all over the place. It's not messy. It's really like, it's like suctioning onto your face. I'll put that on and I'll go to sleep. And that's it. That's my whole thing. A lot, a lot of the time I'll have like a little melatonin before I go to sleep or some nighttime tea. And I'll put my face mask on and I will stare at the same thing. Three hours because I'm a terrible <laughs> uh, I definitely empathize with that. I've definitely been through periods in my life where I like cannot sleep, and but sleep is so important for your skin, uh, just for your overall health, honestly. But um, not sleeping well definitely has a negative impacts on your skin. Um, and I don't have scientific evidence to back up this, but something that I've found just anecdotally that helps me is there is this song on YouTube that you can listen to for free. It's 10 hours long on repeat. I'll have it linked below uh, just in case it could possibly help one of you out there. Um, but I just play it like very quietly, like on a very low volume on my phone and I sleep really well with that. So uh, yeah, um, Dr. Dre has a really nice video that she published recently on um, tips for getting better sleep. So I'll also link that down below. If you are really struggling with sleep and nothing seems to help, please talk to your doctor. It, it, it can really have a serious impact on your health and it's just really important to speak with a healthcare professional about that. So yeah, I definitely empathize with her about, you know, just laying there for hours. I have a really hard time falling asleep a lot of nights. Um, so definitely can relate to that. Recently, I found that this song helps me, so I'll link it below. I hope that it can help some of you as well. But yeah, that's it. That's my nighttime routine. Thank you so much for getting ready to go to bed with me. I hope that you learned something new from my skincare routine. I love you guys so much. Stay strong, stay kind to yourselves, stay home, and I'll see you guys next time. So I really enjoyed that. I mean, again, I really hope that I didn't come across as degrading or like I was being disrespectful. I just really wanted to let you guys know about ingredients that could cause sensitivity. Um, for people with sensitive skin. Again, obviously her skin looks so radiant and beautiful. So this skincare routine is working excellent for her. I hope that some of my recommendations can help you out as far as like cheaper alternatives and um, just going through the ingredients with you. I really hope that it helped. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. I really enjoy doing these videos. So if there's any one skincare routine you want me to look at next and look at the ingredients for their skincare routine next, let me know because this is really so much fun for me. I really enjoy it. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoy it as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark From so far away, show us where we are
What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of?